And joining us today in our Book Talk segment, great to welcome uh, two authors, a very interesting book. It's called The Triple Package, How Three Unlikely Traits Explain the Rise and Fall of Cultural Groups in America. We're joined today by uh, Amy Chua and Jeb, uh, Jed Rubenfield on the telephone. And uh, Amy and Jed, good to talk with you. How are you today? Thanks for great. Having. Thanks for having us. Yeah, good to have a chance to, to chat with you for a couple of minutes. I had an opportunity to, to read through the book and uh, interesting thesis uh, to kind of come up with uh, uh, the, the cultural changes, I guess, different uh, ethnic groups, how they've uh, succeeded, uh, maybe over other groups. Well, what, first of all, what brought you both of you together to, to write it? Well, I'll tell you, you know, we're having some economic problems in America. We've got a tough economy. We've got rising inequality. We've got declining upward mobility. But what people aren't telling you is that for some individuals, some families, and some groups in the United States, they are still experiencing upward mobility at rates far exceeding the rest of the country. They really are. It's just a fact. People don't want to talk about this, but it's true. Um, the kids of uh, restaurant workers, dry cleaners, they are rising at rates unlike the rest of the country. So what Amy and I set out to do was let's be honest about this. Let's, let's look at these groups that are doing so well because, you know, maybe we can learn something. And it turns out that they are all, uh, you know, they, they have this thing in common. They, they, they have these three qualities, and, and they, these qualities are accessible to anyone, anyone from any background can have them, and that's what we wrote our book to try to show. Yeah, Amy, how, how did you kind of uh, go around, uh, go go about the, the research for this, uh, f finding out the, the specifics of these uh, three qu uh, qualities people have? Well, it's interesting. Um, we just about 10, 15 years ago, we started noticing a change in demographics at our own Yale Law School where we teach. You know, in one class of 16 students, we had, you know, Four Mormons, <laughs> um, and then a lot of Cuban American students. I mean, really, seemingly a lot. And then suddenly, a much greater increase in Indian American and Pakistani Americans, Chinese Americans, a lot of Nigerian students, and Ghanaian and Jamaican. So we finally thought, is this just us? Is this something weird about Yale Law School, or is this just our perception, <laughs> um, or is this part of a larger picture? So let's get serious about it. So we put together a big research team of students, looked at the census data. I mean, we spent a lot of time being really, really rigorous, just looking at kind of educational attainment, income, very standard measures of success. And sure enough, we found that actually some groups are starkly outperforming um, the national average. And there are actually tons of, I mean, it's more like dozens and dozens of groups, many of them immigrants. Um, but we just focus on the eight largest ones, and they include the groups that we mentioned, you know, um, two non-immigrant groups, Jews and Mormons, and then Nigerian-Americans, Cuban-Americans, um, Chinese, Persian Americans, Lebanese Americans, Indian Americans, Nigerian Americans, and we kind of said, let's figure out what what, what are these people have in common. Is it? And at first, we thought maybe it's going to be everybody has a different story, but we discovered actually that they all share these three qualities um, that kind of create drive in in. in, in people and children and propel them to disproportionate success. Yeah, I think uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Jews, and, and, and that, I guess, traditionally people think, you know, the Jewish people uh, have always kind of been big on, uh, obviously, education, maybe going to professions like law or, or being a doctor, that kind of thing. Uh, uh, but I was a little surprised uh, about, about the Mormons. I didn't realize that was that. And the Nigerians, that's kind of interesting. So a couple, a couple of groups of people you wouldn't necessarily think... Uh, uh, not that they're not successful, but you wouldn't put in that category. You know, that's exactly right. Nigerians, who are less than 1% of America's black population, last year they were uh, 20 to 25% of the uh, black student body at the Harvard Business School. Same uh, disproportionate representation on Wall Street and, 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 and as doctors. And, you know, what we said is to ourselves, look, this debunks racial stereotypes. Success in this country, it, 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 it's not linked to race. And, and, and the Hispanic Americans have a, one of the most successful groups, too, the, the Cuban Americans. So we said, let's, let's be prepared to look at these facts. Let's pull back the curtain and see if we can find something these groups are all doing in common. And, and of course, you know, it's not every single one of them. These are just, you know, uh, trends. And, and what these groups are doing inside their homes, and, and they're communicating values to their kids of uh, essentially... Um, uh, you're exceptional, but you should feel, you know, so, so you have this sense of pride and, and superiority even in some of these cases, but also you're not good enough yet. Don't feel self-esteem yet. Uh, feel like you have to prove yourself. You know, we're, we're outsiders in this country. You have to prove yourself. And then finally, impulse control. 
um, habits of discipline and grit. So those are the three qualities, a, a sense of exceptionality, uh, insecurity, and uh, habits of discipline or impulse control. Yeah, I think, I think the insecurity part, you see so many, particularly in show business, uh, some of the great uh, you know, comedians uh, come up with uh, <laughs> very hard lives as children, very insecure, and they, they turn that into success. And I guess that trait uh, obviously uh, applies to, to different, you know, any kind of industry you go into, right? That insecurity drives you forward. Right. We, do, we have two major studies of um, very successful people in all fields in the 20th and uh, 18th century um, we are fascinating. They all sh they show that insecurity, like a lot of these very prominent people, Winston Churchill, you know, Bill Clinton, um, scientists. They many of them, a vast number of them, experience some form of adversity or disability or a problem in their childhood that made them insecure and kind of not complacent. So you're exactly right. We have one statistic in the book that I think is really striking. Uh, in a study of 4,000 uh, freshmen across the country in colleges, they found that Asian Americans reported the lowest self-esteem, that is, they didn't feel they were doing well, and yet the highest grades and scores. So it's kind of the opposite, I mean, of the self-esteem movement that says just tell everybody that they're amazing and they're great and they will they will end up achieving. It turns out that if you sever self-esteem from actually any accomplishment, you end up getting worse results. <laughs> I guess, you know, the, these qualities are, are important in, in motivation and in driving people to succeed, but you don't want to teach lack of self-esteem or, or, or that you're you know, worse than somebody else. I mean, you don't want to teach that, so, so it kind of works against itself. The more successful you become, then these traits go away, right? You know, it's such an interesting thing you're bringing up. I mean, in, in, in groups, you see this. As they get more successful in America, it's kind of an iron law. Immigrant groups, first generation does well. Second generation does even better. Remarkable upward mobility. Third generation decline. So, yeah, success breeds or, or sows the seeds of its own decline. And why is that? Because you get comfortable. You right. you know, you don't feel the same insecurity. You don't feel the same need for impulse control. And I'll tell you, this is so important. You know, it's one of our most important findings. Um, let me be very concrete about third generation decline. Asian Americans in this country, 140 points higher SAT scores than the rest of the country. That's remarkable. Wow. But when the sociologists broke it out and looked at third generation Asian American kids, no difference between their academic performance and everybody else's. And, and I'm emphasizing this because it proves it's not genetic. Yeah. It's not racial. It's not built in. But it also shows, hey, it's not all about the class background of your parents. It's not all about their wealth or education because if it were, then the third generation should do better than the second generation, but they don't. Instead, it's the inculcation of uh, work ethic, attitudes, um, this, this combination of superiority and insecurity that you see in these first and ge second generation families and also in some other groups. And we really think that's what's doing the work. And I'm, I'm mentioning all that because these are things that anybody can have. Any family, any parents can do this with their, their kids. They're, they're not the exclusive you know, property of these groups. Well, it's a fascinating study called the Triple Package, and we just kind of touched on it, but uh, we've been talking with Amy Chu and Jed Rubenfield today, Rubenfeld today, and uh, do you have a website you want to direct people to get this book? I know it just came out in paperback, right? Yeah, just came out, um, uh, www.thetriplepackage.com, um, or just, uh, you know, anything on Amazon, it's, uh, it's just newly out. Great. Amy Chu and Jed Rubenfeld, thanks for joining us today. Good luck with the book, and hopefully we can talk to you again. Thanks for being with us. Thanks so much. If you'd like to order the book we're talking about, please go to DougMilesMedia.com and enter the author's name in the Amazon search box. Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or DougMilesMedia.